Hey folks, in this video we're going to take a look at how to create an interactive video in Moodle. Uh, Moodle has this tool called H5P. Uh, you don't have to understand what that is. It's basically the Swiss Army tool of interactive uh, elements in Moodle. In one of those tools is an interactive video. So to create this, it's actually two steps. And so we're going to take a look at how we're going to uh, do that. It, it takes a little bit of extra work but the extra work is worth the payoff. So, uh, as always, we're in our Moodle class. We come up to Edit Mode On. We scroll down to an area. Actually, we don't scroll down to an area. Uh, we come up here to our little menu for our course, and under More, we're gonna select Content Bank. Don't worry, if you select more and you don't see as many options, you shouldn't. I'm using an administrator account. You will have an instructor account. So, we're gonna select Content Bank. And once we're in Content Bank, we're going to see uh, just any content that we may have created specifically for this course. Um, if we have created content in other course, and this is useful if you want to use the same interactive video in different places, you would select this little drop menu and you could actually pull from other courses or you could actually go global and see any content that you have made across the course. All of that's irrelevant. Um, I switch it to system. Uh, I switch it to system, meaning across all courses. Um, but whether I'm here or in my course, what I'm going to first do is come to the little add button, and it's going to list H5P interactive content. So there's a lot of different options. I'll share some resources about you know how you can find out what each of these options are. They're all really cool. But I'm really interested, of course, in the interactive video. Uh, so it's about, as you can see, two thirds of the way scrolling down. So I'm going to select interactive video. It's going to say we're going to add this interactive video. And so now I am actually going to start to fill out the information. If I want a clearer understanding of what these things are, and in fact the first time you do, this little automatic tour feature will show up. But I know what I'm doing, so that tour feature didn't show up. So I'm going to give this a title. Uh, I'm going to call it Uncanny Valley because that's the video I'm bringing in. Right here is where I add the video. If I click the little plus button, uh, it asks, do you want to upload a video or take a video from YouTube? And those are really your only two options, is you have it as a video file. Maybe it's a video you, uh, that, are, that you've recorded or something like that, or you are grabbing from YouTube. All right, that looks good. I'm going to hit insert. There's several different options throughout here that I'll just kind of quickly go over. Under interactive video, again, it provides you a title if you want to provide a short description. This is particularly useful if you are not using a YouTube video. If you have provided your own video, you might give it a short description, provide a different title, uh, and even add a poster image. The poster image is the first image that shows up before the video plays. So we, by and large, these are not related if you're using that YouTube video. So you're going to leave that. Similarly, text tracks, um, if you need closed captioning and the like for non-video, uh, for non-YouTube videos. Behavioral settings, you have, again, a couple options. If you want to start the video at a particular time, so if you have, say it's like a one-hour lecture that you have found on YouTube, but you only want them to listen to a certain, t you know, start at a certain point, you can do that. You can have autoplay or loop. I tend to encourage leaving these off uh, just because it's really useful for the students to be able to press play when it makes sense for them to press play and looping doesn't make sense if they have no use for looping it. Um, in very rare cases, if it's like a five second video, maybe you would loop it and just so that they can continue to watch it to like to hone in on something. But And then, uh, you can set an override for whenever you're asking questions with the video uh, to automatically enable showing the solution or automatically allowing them to retry. So this is the thing about interactive video is you can, so you can insert questions and content into the video throughout. Uh, so it's a really cool feature because if you want them to be engaged with the video, really be interacting and thinking about what they're learning, you can just embed questions throughout. So it's really cool. Uh, you have a couple other options here you can decide to include or not include. Um, some of them may not make sense um, and if they don't then clearly that's they're of no use. And then finally text overrides. Uh, if for any reason you wanted to use 
different language around uh, the interactive video. So instead of it, you know, instead of it being play, you had run video. Um, you're probably not likely to use these, but it's useful to know you can really play around with them and you can also change languages uh, around them. So that's kind of cool. All right. That's all extra. What we're really imp we really care about is that we've added our video, and now we want to go to the next step, which is add interactions. I can go by clicking add interactions up here, or just selecting next step. Uh, it's set up in a very sequential way. So add interactions. Now that I'm in here, what you're going to notice is that I have this is the video that it's taken from YouTube. And it gives me this full toolbar of different things I can insert. So I can insert a label, which might be just a title or something. I can insert text, so I might want to just have uh, occasionally text to show up. And maybe it's a question, maybe like a question for them to be thinking while they're watching the scene. Maybe it's a correction because it's a really good video, but there's this one thing they say that is actually irrelevant. Maybe it is you just wanting uh, to highlight something, whatever. It's, you know, to emphasize this is a key point or connect something, whatever you want. But what you want to do is find in the video where you want that to go. So you may not want it at the beginning. You may want it, say, at, the, at the 27 second mark. Okay, this is where it should go. All right, so then you just will hit text. And it's going to ask you, all right, uh, is this a button? Is this a poster? And it tells you what that is. A button is a collapsed interaction the user must press uh, must press to open. Poster is expanded interaction display. So we're going to do poster. It's just going to pop, pop out. And the information there is going to say, what did you think of his description of the uncanny valley? And this can be just kind of an open question, a, a thought for them to consider and explore. Visuals, if you want to kind of have that stand out a little or have it a different color, um, you can play around with the colors. I always recommend to be thoughtful about the colors that you're using because, of course, they may or may not, um, for people, they you want to make sure that there's a strong contrast, right? You don't want them to contradict or, or clash and make it hard for people to read. And then Go uh, go to on click means what is um, if they click on it, what do you want them to happen? So nothing, uh, the time code, or you send them to another page, right? So if I wanted something to pop up and let them know that, oh, you know, for more on the Uncanny Valley, so, you know, check out this resource from Wikipedia. I could put in that link here and then visualize allows to show that the interaction be can be clicked by adding a border around the icon. All great, I'm gonna skip all of that. I have the question that I want. And again, notice I have a toolbar here so I can play around and format this text. So maybe I really want it to be uh, bold and centered. All right, we're gonna hit done. And so this is what it's gonna look like. Now that it's here, I actually can drag and drop it where I want. Um, I can also adjust its size, so maybe I want it to be, you know, a little bit more, a little clearer. Um, and then the question is, where does it go? <coughs> if I have it like this, it might be covering things up. I could also just kind of have it right here, center in the screen. I could also copy it if for some reason I wanted to add things, and then I could also uh, bring it to the front. So if I had two or three things I was layering here, uh, one on top of the other, and I wanted this to go first, and then the second one, I could play around with the ordering, which is pretty cool. But okay, that's one interaction. That's your text, really pretty straightforward. You have these other options. Again, you can insert them as you choose, but the really cool things are when we get into the questions. Right? So we have things like multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blanks, really drag and drop. So you can kind of set up some interesting visuals with drag and drop of, of the different terms marking the words, dragging the words, right? So a lot of really kind of cool different ways you can question and engage with the students around the video. So let's go to another point on the, uh, on the recording. And we're just going to move this down to say here. And now we might decide to, I'm going to also remove that so we can see the full video. Okay. So say there's another point in the 
video. And before we go to that next point in the video, notice right here, and you might not be able to see it on your screen, but there's a little dot here. That dot indicates there's an interaction that happens here. So this becomes clear for both uh, students and you, where you've inserted your different interactions. All right, so maybe here you want to do the multiple choice. And again, you can do it as a button or as a poster. Uh, we'll call this first question. And then this is where it gets a little confusing because you will have often uh, things like labels and titles and questions. Like there's, you can get lost pretty easy. And this is one of the more, this is one of the, the challenging things with this tool is that sometimes it can feel a little confusing. So in this case, label displayed next to interaction icon. So when this shows up, it's telling you uh, what they're labeling the interaction. And then this is actually the title used uh, for, well, in this case, it's telling you searching reports, copyright information, uh, but it's also something that's likely to show up. So you, I will often uh, provide a little more detail on this one. So the first question is really about this item, <coughs> sorry, is about this video in my course. The second one is a little more broader. So I want to provide a little more uh, clarity. So. I might just mimic this question with this qu with the question I'm actually going to ask. So I might do something like, uh, "What what is the uncanny valley?" And so that can be the title. If there's additional media I want to insert, uh, so optional media media to display, I could do an image, a video. Uh, so this might be something where I decide, do I want to show an example of the uncanny valley and say, is this the uh, is this an example of the uncanny valley? Then here's my question again, very simple. I'm going to just throw in that same question, and then I actually have to give I have to give some choices. So I'm going to use the uh, textbook or, or Wikipedia answer, um, and I missed, all right. And uh, this is the correct answer. But I also it's multiple choice, so I want to have a few other options. So um, I'm going to say the valley uh, where cans go to die, right? Because it's uncanny, so they're no longer cans. I know somebody is laughing and somebody's rolling their eyes at the one, that one. This one I might add. This is where the X Men go to retire. Points to people who know that reference. So I've got my questions now. I want to kind of get things ready for uh, what happens when they complete this and the feedback that they get. So right here, uh, it, it defaults to zero to 100%, and that means this would be the same, whatever they get, if they got zero or they got 100%, they would get the same feedback. Since this is one question, I might change this. I might add a range and actually have between zero and zero percent, and when I do that, this automatically becomes 1% to 100%. And this basically means because it is only one question, they can either get it right or wrong. I, you know, the if they don't get it right, they get a zero. So I might say, you know, try again, revisit, you know, uh, for 4:55 minute mark, right? So I might direct them to where they want to go and find the answer. And here I might just say, great job and add something about the topic. You know, the uncanny valley is so, f nope, three, several zero, several O's there, fascinating. All right, added that range. Um, oops, uh, I should have left it like that. There we go, added that range. Behavioral settings, do you want to allow them, we talked, we saw these a little bit before, do you want to allow them to retry, enable, slow, show solutions once they get it right or wrong? Question type means uh, you may be either doing multiple choice or multiple selection. And this is where, again, it's one of those little confusing things. Technically, when we talk about multiple choice, we're often thinking it's a single choice, multiple choice question. That is convoluted, yes. What we mean is that there's several different answers listed and you can only choose one. If you can only choose one correct answer, then your question is a single choice 
question, and that means there'll be radio buttons. Radio buttons mean that if you choose one, you can't choose others. If you have several correct answers that students are supposed to know and check off, then you're doing what's often called multiple select, or in this case, to make things complicated, multiple choice. In that case, you would see checkboxes, kind of like down here, we see checkboxes. So you just, what I would say is leave it to automatic. It, if you end up having more than one, one correct answer, then it will default to that multiple choice. If there's only one right answer, it will use the single choice. One of the nice features of defaults is it randomizes answers. This is actually really great. The only thing you want to make sure is that if one of your answers that you have is something like all of the above, you just want to change that to all of these answers because all of the above is if you can't randomize that to be at the bottom. So all of the above could end up being the first answer and that won't make sense. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind is that any, any reference to order, you would want to take out of the, the answers that you're offering. And then require an answer before the solution can be viewed. We have a few other small options that I would say you can largely ignore. Uh, and then coming down to adaptability, and this is really about if you want to play around, if you want to get a little bit deep in the weeds and kind of how or what happens after they answer, if you want to send them to a different point in the video, uh, if they're all correct, or if you want to uh, require some, like they can't go forward until they do it and, and uh, get it correct, you can play around with those. I don't recommend it. I think, you know, this is where it can get really overloading uh, the first few times you're playing with it. So I'm going to tell you to largely skip that. And so we've, we have our question, we have the information, we're just going to go to save. And now on the next screen, we will see that our video now has actually two dots here. And notice the dots are different. So one is a little, is a, is a little dot, the other one is a circle. Uh, and also notice on the bar, if I hold my mouse over this one, all I get is text. So it tells me what it is, it's text. And this one, remember when we added first question, so it's telling me, oh, this is where the first question is. So. I'm only going to go over those two features, but I would definitely encourage you to play around more and kind of see what that looks like. And you can always go back if you haven't added enough questions or you feel like you missed a question or, or missed an opportunity, you can select edit. It will bring up that editor again. We would just go to add interactions. And again, we get that little toolbar. Uh, you can definitely play around. I have some resources that'll kind of explain what some of these additional questions are. I think a lot of folks like that multiple choice or the true false uh, to really kind of put those in and allow for that interaction to occur. So assuming you add a bunch of questions and you feel like it, you have everything you need, you do actually want to just come to this last step, the summary step. And in this summary step, the summary task is actually kind of cool. You can have students do essentially identify or uh, select what the what is the like the culminating understa understanding of what they just uh, saw. So again, always giving it a title, uh, uncanny valley, and you can keep it simple. Summary statement. The directions. Uh, it's pretty simple, choose the correct statement. And so here again, they are going to have several different uh, statements to choose from. So here's that description again I had of the Uncanny Valley. So I'm just gonna use that really quickly. Uh, for you, it might be something more detailed, something more nuanced relating to not just the video, but also something within the course or you're asking them connect, you know, what they saw here with what they learned in class this week. But you might have several different things to choose from. So again, I might say uh, another statement is um, the uncanny valley is where cans go to die. And I could add a third statement. And so this would be kind of a final, uh, just a final summary task, letting them, you know, identify or try to think about the fullness of what they just saw. Great, perfect, that's all set. Again, we have options for feedback. Um, we have, we can display it for, you know, it's asking us how long do you want to display uh, before the video ends. 
So you can have it start to display at the three seconds uh, before the video ends, and then you have some other behavioral and text overrides that we talked about before. All right, everything's good, everything's fancy, we're set to go. I'm gonna hit add statements, and I'm gonna come down to save. And now our video is all set and it is ready to play and notice again we there's another summary there's another activity that we just added and it shows up there all right this is the hard part about creating the using the interactive video is getting it set up and adding the questions now that you've added it it is now part of your content bank so if we come to more and we go to content bank notice uncanny valley is right there the icon gives us an indication of what kind of content it is. Notice it looks kind of similar to that, you know, to the video itself where you've got the little play line and the like. All right, now that we have that, it's pretty simple to actually create our own, uh, to put this into the course that we are looking to insert it into. So here I am back in my course. I want to add an activity or resource. I'm going to come to activities. I'm going to select H5P. I'm going to give it a name, surprisingly unique, called Uncanny Valley, right? Who's with me still? And then here it's going to say, all right, where do we grab the package from? And you're going to be like, what package? And it, very simply, it is the package that is that video with its questions that we just created. So we're going to just actually click in this area and we're going to come up to content bank. See, it's right up here at the top under your file picker. And if you rem if you did it and you when you created it and you stayed within your course, then it will show up here. I don't know if you remember, but I actually selected to put it in system. And here it is right in my system. Here's that uncanny valley tool. So I'm going to put it in. I will link to I may want to make a copy of it or link to the file. If I make a copy of it, the value there is that I can customize this and still have that original one uh, in my system folder. If I link to it, anytime I change that, that file, that, that video in the system folder, then this will change as well. So just keep in mind, keep in mind it's very similar to when you are saving things and, you know, saving it in the same document or saving it as a new document. Select the file. There it is. Again, I get a couple more options here. Uh, do I want to allow uh, download, embed button, copyright button? Uh, I might select both of these because depending if the student is using the mobile app, that might be useful. And then I can actually have this as a graded activity. Um, I can select none and it's just an activity that they do or I can select grade and, and you know depending on how I view these within the course is this something like homework where it's you know uh, something I expect them to do and engage with however I want I can put it in the category all of that attempt options again I can enable attempt tracking I can make sure they get the highest grade and uh, allow them to review their own attempts generally these are all really useful if, if I'm going to uh, want that want them to be able to do it and, and get it common module settings uh, either show right on the course page or hide from students if I had groups I would put that I could have only certain groups see this and then activity completion students can mark it done I always like activity is shown when students uh, view this activity uh, and students must receive a grade to complete this activity. doesn't matter what grade, they just have to complete it. And I can put an expected completed on date. So if I want to say I want them to do this, you know, by Thursday in the course, I can put that on there. All right, that's all set. I hit save and display. And of course, you get this little notice that can be a little scary, like the content is, uh, is displayed in preview mode. No attempt tracking will be stored. Uh, that's fine. You, you're, you are the instructor, it, they shouldn't be, like you don't need to, uh, your attempts don't need to be tracked or stored. Great, now it's here. This, if I wanna see what it looks like for students, I can always move up here, switch role, and come down to student. And now I can play the video and start interacting with it. So 
as you can see, it's one of the more detailed, more robust tools within Moodle. Uh, that said, there's so much you can do with this as you start to use video and want students to be thinking about and engaging, interacting with videos. Uh, my recommendation is to kind of think about what are the videos that you're using and consider, you know, slowly, maybe one a week, um, as you ramp up to your to a course, slowly introduce a video a week and uh, add those questions where you think they make the most amount of sense. I hope this is useful. Uh, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.